Bonjour, 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 and welcome to Culturally Jewish. I'm David Sklar. And I'm Ilana Zakon. I'm back in the land of Putin, Kaskut, and Schwartzes, where the old warm greeting of bonjour hi has been replaced with the unilingual bonjour. On this week's episode, Alana and I are going to have a chat about my play Vial, which is currently being workshopped at Dawson College in Montreal this month. Mama always wanted me to be a doctor, but I became an artist and that really shocked her. Now I'm interviewing people in the biz, pros, and newish, but all of them are artists and they're culturally Jewish. David, first of all, you went to Dawson, right? That's where you did theater school? Yes, I graduated in 2007. And now you're back with a play that you wrote. Let, can you fill our audience in a bit about how this came to be? Certainly. In about September, one of the teachers there was approaching a bunch of playwrights across the country, soliciting them for any new plays that her students of her text class could sort of sink their teeth into and really explore. She was looking for some plays. She, she sort of told me she found a bunch of plays and she just felt they were a bit easier or, or kind of babyish, as she described. So I presented my play Vial to her. She read it and then said, yes, approve. Uh, let's put it on for my text class at the end of the year. And then she said, you know, come out and meet the students and discuss with them the reasons for why you wanted to create this play, what's going on in this play. And this was in September and everything changed for this play after October 7th, obviously. So tell us a bit about what this play is about. Okay, so Vial is the story of Sarah, a Mizrahi professor in a university Jewish studies department. And while she's overseeing her departmental journal publication, her favorite student, Aliyah, who is a, I would probably describe as like um, a Jewish Voices for Peace student activist. She begins writing an article uh, about uh, Judaism, uh, Zionism, and as she describes it, eugenics. And that kind of sets this whole play in motion where the article is so obscene for her, her TA, uh, Jacob, that he says, we cannot publish this. She believes in pure freedom of speech and freedom of expression at the beginning of the play. And she agrees to, this is something that I'm allowing to be published. And that sets off craziness of university campus politics. And it just spirals out of control from there. For some people, this play is about cancel culture and student protests. For other people, it is about the rabbit hole of Jewish identity. And for other people, it is about DNA and blood. So it's really interesting. You actually wrote this play before October 7th, as you just mentioned. Can you tell us a bit about the inspiration for the piece and how things have shifted for you knowing what happened in October 7th? Did you go back and change anything? Do you have any new perspective on your own play? Yeah, so I guess we'll start with I wrote this play and I call this play my pandemic play, right? I wrote it when we'd all lost our jobs and I applied and got a grant to start it. And it was really two things that sort of brought it together. One, I was reading an article in Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper, that the rabbinates in Israel were considering for a time to use DNA testing to prove whether Jews from Russia and the former Soviet Union were actually right. Jews by blood. Because as people know, when the Soviet Union collapsed, these Jewish communities had no proof that they were Jewish, right? It had been destroyed. Mm -hmm. It had been lost. It had been hidden because they were under a lot of repression. So the rabbinate was dealing with these the, the next generation of these kids who were entering the army. And they said, we cannot prove their Judaism. Let us use DNA testing and blood to determine it. And that sort of freaked out a large segment of Israeli society because they were saying, wait, we're using blood now to determine if we're Jews. Who does that sound like? That sounds like the Nazis. And then the rabbinate sort of quickly pulled back this idea. But that was one idea. That was something I was thinking about is what makes someone Jewish? Is it tradition, history, culture, religion, or is it in, in you, in your blood? And then the second thing happened around the same time at the University of Toronto in the Law Society. There was someone who was going to be hired who had written quite a few critical things about Israel, um, but she was approved. And then by the time she was approved, something happened over a course of a week or a weekend where then she was removed and she was fired. And then they started digging. How could this have happened where she had passed all the interviews, everything was approved, uh, but then they think some donors, some wealthy donors were involved to sort of say, we do not want her anywhere near this because of her criticisms of Israel and Israeli policy, she needs to be let go. And then that created a whole other ruckus at the campus saying, are donors interfering in politics? Are they interfering in hiring and firing professors? So it was really those two stories that launched me into writing this play vial. 
And you were actually wondering if your play wasn't timely enough before the <laughs> before the seventh, and now it's become very, very topical. So how how has your opinion shifted on what you wrote? Did you go back and change anything? You know, it's interesting first because I was workshopping this play um, where I had to sort of explain so much because it's very insider baseball terminology, right? We talk a lot about the the Jewish community and their their ideas around Israel or what it means to be Jewish and even Zionism too. I had to walk through with the actors what all these terminologies meant because some of them at the beginning did not even understand what Zionism was. That all changed after October 7th. Everyone has an opinion or most people have an opinion on Zionism, right? Whether they are in love with it or they absolutely hate it. So it now is like everyone already has a preconceived notion of what's in the script, even before it comes forward and is presented. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so much more difficult. So you workshopped this previously in Calgary? Yeah, um, I workshopped it with a company called Verb Theater. Uh, we set up a week long workshop for it to sort of, you know, work. That's what we always do. I had a dramaturg on board. It was a lovely, excellent um experience to really listen to some very professional pro actors in Calgary to sort of say, this is what landing on me. Is this what you intended? Mm -hmm. I'm a little confused here. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, and, and, and that those were some great workshops. And then this play, I started submitting to a bunch of different companies. It won an award for a theater company in Calgary. It was shortlisted for the Playwrights Guild of Canada. Um, but now it's kind of in a deep freeze, unfortunately, again, because of October 7th, that I don't think anyone wants to touch this work because it is too controversial. It is too, it's, 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 it's tension inducing. It makes people uncomfortable because just because of the material, which is quite unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So before we talk about Dawson, I was just curious in your workshop you did with Verb Theater, did you have Jewish actors portraying the Jewish characters? Well, Alana, um, there's not too many Jewish actors in, <laughs> Jewish, in the city Jewish Mizrahi of <laughs> actors who live in Calgary? <laughs> Unfortunately not. I have been struggling okay. to find a Jewish Mizrahi actor for this part. So no, we did not have okay. uh, Jewish people playing it. I, I was the resident Jew involved. Okay, so you had to take on that bulk. Okay. So, I did. So now we're, now we're at Dawson. So this week, as you said, you went to the college to help them workshop this play. As I understand from the interviews that you did with a few students, there were only two Jewish actors working on this. And what first came to my mind is, again, that weight of having to explain everything. And I know that's a big conversation going on. Equity released a, a survey not uh, not long ago asking like, have you ever been in a position when you worked on a play where it was about your specific background and you felt like you had to do something you weren't paid to do, like be a cultural mm -hmm. consultant or a religious consultant? And how did that make you feel? And do you wish you were compensated? And how could blah, 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 blah. So I I'm curious what that was like for those Jewish students and, and what the general vibe was in the room, especially having previously workshopped it with a group of non-Jewish actors. You said that it was a lot. You had to explain a lot of things. Was that a similar experience at Dawson? And and what was the vibe like in the room? Okay. So first the vibe in the room, going into the room, I was very nervous. And my mother was very nervous too, because it's like, Aww. what are they going to say? Are they going to protest this play? Is it going to be boycotted? Are these students going to refuse to even get involved in this type of material? I just want to say, first off, they were so open. They were so receptive. They were so willing to learn if, if things that they didn't know. And they were all on board to get on the stage and run through these scenes. So it, I was so happy about that, right? Just because of the times we live in and the encampments a couple of blocks down the road and protests happening across yeah. campuses, they were just 100% committed to trying trying this play out. There was no pushback at all? Like everyone was just on board? Everyone was on board. Everyone had questions. Why, why is this important to her? Why is she doing this? What does this mean? So they were asking questions like real actors were asking, right? They're like, we want to understand why this thing is so important to Aaliyah, one of the characters, right? And why is Sarah fighting against it? Or what's going on in Sarah's mind? Of Why is it so important that her baby is Jewish for the next generation, right? They were just eager to learn. Mm. I want to play now some tape for you that I recorded while at Dawson College and with the students in the rehearsal room. Uh, we're going to hear from a few of the students, three of them. First, we have Dahlia, who is actually a non-Jewish student. Uh, then we're going to hear later on a bit from Rachel, one of two Jewish students who, I'll be very honest, had a lot of concerns and worries almost like we were sort of airing a lot of our dirty laundry in public. And she didn't know how to feel 
uh, about a lot of the subject matters in the script. And then finally, to wrap it up, we're going to uh, talk to Bram, who, who focused more on the experience of what it was like being a Jewish student on campus and trying to navigate through these difficult times. So let's start with Dahlia. Well, my initial impression um, was that it was kind of a, an overwhelming amount of information. Um, I'm, I'm not Jewish. Um, I, 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 did, I guess I don't know much. I didn't know much about the history, but actually uh, reading the play kind of uh, allowed me to educate myself a bit more than I, I had previously. Like I, I was asking more questions and uh, just had to do some more research so that I could understand the play fully. And uh, we had to review our, our objectives and stuff for our scenes. And so doing that, I had to understand the background of what my character was talking about. So um, I liked that it allowed me to have a I guess, like a, an opportunity to uh, educate myself further. She found it was an overwhelming amount of information. What do you think that says about the way that non-Jews are being educated about Jewish culture or ethnicity or religion? And and how do we... When you're working on a play like this, like you even said when you workshopped it in Calgary, you also had to explain a lot of things. So to me, it's like, is that a sign that we should be working with Jews for these kind of plays so that we give it that authenticity? Or is this like a good opportunity to be able to educate people? What, what do you make of all of that? I, I really appreciate how they, I was being interviewed and they weren't going easy on me. They sort of yeah, had constructive, they had good. constructive, yeah, they had constructive criticism. That was great. And that's something I'm quite aware of because as I say, it is sort of insider baseball terminology. I don't have a character from the outside saying, hey, what does this mean? And what's going on here? Which it is takes place. great. I hate when plays do that or like right. movies or anything where they're hitting you on the head. Anyway. Continue. And I made that conscious choice not for my play to be that particular play. Um, I think... Yes, it is partially um, a thing of many non-Jews are not, don't know what goes on in the Jewish community or, or doesn't understand the struggles, but it's also a great thing to then explore it within this play, right? Because then you get on board and that particular student was so well-researched. She came in knowing so much. She took the time and sort of said, I need to understand what's going on in this play. I'm going to do my own homework afterwards. And that mm -hmm. helped her uh, prepare for the scenes on the day of, and I was very, very grateful for that. So uh, is there a lot going on in this play? It's a bit, there's a lot of intellectual arguments. There's a lot of debates happening in this play. There's a lot of uh, nuance, I would say. Um, and that's something I'm gonna keep in the back of my mind too. It's very important and it was very appropriate. One of the Jewish students was quite uncomfortable with the material and came up to the teacher afterwards. And I totally understand that and I feel so bad, but apparently as they're reading the script, I think, all the non-Jews in class are sort of given the eyeballs to the two Jewish students being like, how are they responding to this material? Are they upset? Are they frustrated? Mm -hmm. Because this play sort of takes shots at everybody, in a sense. Uh, it, 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 it breaks down a lot of sacred cows, too, even within the Jewish community. So she was very stressed out and worried about what is this playwright David sort of saying and where is he coming from? And it's a little uncomfortable and I don't know. For me, well, when I first read it, I, for, I was a little taken aback just because of the conflicts that were going on within three different people that were coming from the same religion, ethnicity, to see such different drastic opinions and them all getting angry at each other for it was very shocking. And at first I didn't understand. So like over time, like as I was looking at it uh, during the week to just get a better understanding of it, it became more clear that this is just something that does happen within the Jewish community. There are different opinions and there are different beliefs that occur. Like one person can have one faith about one thing and follow the Torah versus another who might disagree with other things. Like, and that's just how Judaism is. There's so many different sectors, so many different branches that like they're, that they can conflict with one another. And I, I, I understood that more. And so we hear uh, from a couple of Jewish students and one non-Jewish student, what are we not hearing? What kind of conversations did you have that we don't have access to right now that you could share with us? Any aha moments for any of the non-Jewish students or any particularly interesting questions they asked you? We were having a discussion um, as a full group before we even got to the recording. And I was, I was so pleasantly surprised, as I said before, about just how open they were. But I think one thing that stood out for me uh, and that was always a question in my mind about the script is where where does this script end? Do we leave on a, a sour note? Do we leave on a hopeful note? And I asked the students, I just said, like, in your life, 
are you generally hopeful for the future or are you pessimistic about the future with what we see on social media? These kids were so knowledgeable. They, they understood the problems of social media, which I also talk about in the play. They were saying it's just pulling our society apart. They say it is so not nuanced. It is one person's rail in a couple of lines and it doesn't get to the heart of things. And I was so kind of, wow. I assume that ev- they would have just been so black and white. It was so not yeah. black and white to these students about things. And they talked about how one student uh, talked about how she's probably not hopeful, but she has to believe in hope because if not, then what are we all doing here? Well, I mean, we had a discussion about hopefulness and, um, how, um, yeah, the ending of the play kind of ends on this hopeful note um, and that we were having a discussion about whether we felt hopeful for our future. And um, I think that experiencing theater that uh, allows you to feel hopeful about situations that feel hopeless, because throughout the whole play, it does feel kind of hopeless, you know, it's frustrating. The characters are in this hopeless place a lot of the time you know all of them individually they have these moments where they're just like so frustrated so angry and it's just because it's like it's like there's no solution but to end it on a note that makes you feel hopeful it's like it doesn't really matter what was said or what happened because I feel hopeful Mm. and it it's just it's a feeling and it's there's no denying it because you just feel a certain way so it's it's nice even though you yourself personally do not feel hopeful even though i don't feel (laughs) me myself personally i do not feel hopeful for the future but this did elicit hopeful emotions in me and i can't deny that right it's how i feel yeah so i know you said that the vibe was very very welcoming and everyone was really on board but what i was getting hearing these two jewish students speak is that there definitely is an element of tension and discomfort I think one of my biggest fears when I first saw this play was how are my classmates going to react as us being the only two Jewish people in the classroom? How is everyone else going to react? Because I would hear little things from not just from the program itself, but also like outside of school from people who weren't Jewish talking about the conflict with not an understanding of how it may affect me hearing these words being said. Just throughout the past six months, it's been incredibly difficult. I've tried to connect more and more with like my Jewish community just because of I have people in Israel that are struggling. And I know people who are Palestinian as well, who are also struggling. And it's just a devastating situation. Not contrary to what she said, but kind of a different um, perspective. Any comments that people have said, I just kind of they I don't let them get to me too much because people say all kinds of things. And if I, you know, devote some energy to getting fired up about it, then I'm going to be exhausted. You know, like I've, I've heard some, some, not my classmates, but other people in Dawson say like, oh, we should be boycotting McDonald's because they support genocide. You know, it's like, that's your opinion, I guess. And, um, and I've noticed like within the text classes specifically, not just for this play, but for others, like on the first day, Leah said, you know, you might hate this class. It's going to be uncomfortable. We're going to, we're going to tackle, you know, sensitive topics and you're going to hate this class and that's fine. Um, and um, I could definitely, when we did the first reading of your play, I could feel there was kind of a, mm. just a little Simmering. bit of tension. Did you feel like people are looking at you on how you're going to react and what your opinions are? A little are? bit. I, I was feeling like people were, were watching me yeah. and were watching her. And I was like, yeah, they were, we were like, it's true. You're just like, your mind goes. Yeah. It's like, I mean, look, I, I don't, I don't blame other people in the class. It's just like, yeah. you know, it's just like, it's like instinct, you know, it's like you see it and then it's like, I don't know why. Yeah. I would, I would probably do the same thing too. It's just what scares me about the looks is I don't know what you're thinking not you specifically I just don't know what the class is thinking when those looks are being made like I don't know if it's oh this is gonna be a hard thing for her oh she's gonna agree with everything the Jewish people in this place say like I I, it scares me because I don't know the sentiment that that one of them was explaining really resonated with how I've been feeling in the theater community of like where do I belong whether it's out in Dawson College or in the program or in the arts. And I mean, I know these kids are not in the industry yet. And part of me is like, oh, I hope that if there was a sense of welcoming and, and understanding that those people who will then graduate one day will bring some of that into our failing artistic yeah. community that is not providing that for us at all. But as much as, you know, people were being polite and, and you were engaging, like, did you as a Jew feel that tension or not at all? Like, was that something that maybe left the space once you entered, do you think? 
Yeah, good question. Um, I'll be very honest. I mean, I probably put the tension on me as I was entering the halls of Dawson because I'm just like clocking things, right? I'm like, where are the protest yeah. signs? Where are the kafias, you know, coming about? Do I see all these flags? Like, I, I, I was ready. I was ready for that all over. Um, it felt like a sacred space in the in the theater, right? It felt like that. And what being what you said is yes, those students, or at least one of those students who is Jewish feels the stresses all around her, right? And whether Dawson College or whether the theater program is supporting them completely, I cannot answer, right? Um, I've had my own issues when I was at Dawson, where one of the students of the day, my first week at Dawson said, oh, by the way, did you know the Jews cost September 11th? Oh, God. And this was 15 well, years ago. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, this was 15 years ago. Do those things still exist? They must. Does that student feel those things have comments been said one of the students said yeah people have made stupid comments to him or around him quite anti-semitic comments he said he brushes them off does he really i don't know when you hear them constantly again and again they weigh they wear you down and it's exhausting and unfortunately is it feels like it's exhausting being a jewish artist these days and especially when they graduate what will that world be like will they have the support systems like you said are they gonna have to constantly fight for their right to have a space. I'm not sure. You have a bit of a break between what you did this week and you're going you're going back to the school next week. You have a bit of time to really let everything that happens sink in and maybe think about your approach for for the last day that you're going to be there. Any thoughts on um, what you want to leave them with? Yes. I mean, I'm uh, I will be doing it virtually next week, so I won't be in the physical space. I'll be back in Calgary just because I have to be. Um, but listening to their teacher, listening to the students, taking on some of the stuff that I'm going to, I think, spend the next week revising a scene, really thinking about what they said, leaving with a place of hope, leaving pl with a place of connection and promise. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to spend the next week doing some simple rewrites, I would say, and sort of then taking them and, say, and then sort of saying with the, in the rehearsal room, what do you think? Have we gotten a bit closer to that? Are we a bit further away? And that for me as the playwright is this is such a beneficial thing to be able to have this workshop is let's rewrite a scene and you tell me where it's at this week. Well, Kola Kavud, uh, for writing such a brave piece, especially right now. I know you didn't write it in time for this, but it's happening. So it still it still takes a lot of courage. You know I'm what? Really... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that you know there were things that I could see happening that I was able to call out, and then there were things that I had no idea how bad it could be and how to the degree that it could be, and and that is very true. Well, I look forward to seeing the future lives of Vile, and uh, hopefully I'll come to Montreal and then I'll uh, get a chance to see it in person. Maybe you can even audition for it. Oh, oh. I'm not Mizrahi, <laughs> but maybe I'll That's play true. the non-Jew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> life really miserable for the Jews, or are we just glued to a 24-hour news cycle? Should we be worried that so many young rabbis are coming out of seminary as anti-Zionists? And what does Judaism say about polyamory? If you want answers to these questions, well, we don't have any. But we do love asking them. Each week, tune into Bonjour Chai to hear debates and hot takes by me, Avi Feingold, and me, Phoebe maltz -Bovey. as we sit down with pundits, rabbis, and scholars to talk about the most pressing issues facing Jews in Canada and around the world. Listen and subscribe to Bonjour Chai at thecjn.ca slash bonjour, or wherever you get your podcasts. David, what's on your radar this week? Two things happening. Uh, on May 26th, uh, Montreal-based musician So Called will be coming to Calgary to debut a program of Yiddish songs with string quartet that have been presented across the world. This is an all-Jewish string quartet. Uh, they will demonstrate the historic instruments from the Violins of Hope collection. The evening will include a mix of lively and heart-wrenching Yiddish arrangements of art songs, folk songs, klezmer music, uh, featuring so-called on vocals, piano, and accordion. And then the Violin of Hope exhibition will run at Studio Bell, home of the National Music Center, already started May 3rd, will end June 16th, showing a showcase collection of historic string instruments from before and during the Holocaust. The restored instruments once belonged to victims and survivors of the Holocaust, and now they share the story that wherever there is music, there is hope. So I have something from out west. The Edmonton Jewish Film Festival is taking place from May 21st to May 30th. 
There is uh, a long lineup of films, including a Fiddler on the Roof sing-along and a film called Remembering Gene Wilder. Those are the ones that stood out to me, but there are many other, many, many other films. So apparently there are things happening at Edmonton. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, I want to do a bit of a plug for something else that I'm preparing for at the end of this month. Um, We all know, Alana, you and I talked to about The Runner being canceled in Victoria and then Vancouver. Uh, Based on those discussions, uh, I teamed up with a playwright, Carolyn Russell King, who wanted to create sort of a night of censored and canceled plays. Uh, So we worked together with the downtown Calgary Public Library. We're going to do a 20 minute excerpt from The Runner by Chris Morris, then Peace Talks, another excerpt called of Peace Talks by Izzy Salant and Michael Ryan Michael Dunn, and then Sisters by Wendy Lill. These three plays have been censored or canceled in the past year or so. Uh, and we just wanted to focus that in these times that we should not be censoring art, that we should be promoting it and 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 letting everyone experience what these fabulous playwrights have had to say. Amazing. The last thing on my radar is in Toronto, the Jam X 2024 Jewish Art and Music Exhibition. So it is a student exhibition. Students from select Toronto Jewish day schools worked with artists and residents to create this art exhibit that will be on display at the Miles Nadal JCC in Toronto from May 3rd to May 29th. Lovely. Uh, Well, Alana, um, I don't think I'll get to see you in person this time while I'm in Montreal. It was a short, short trip. Um, but I hope to see you again when I'm back. Definitely, and uh, good luck with the rest of the workshop. I'm very curious to hear how it goes. Thank you very much. I'll let you know. Culturally Jewish is hosted by me, David Sklar, and... Ilana Zakon. We're produced and edited by Michael Freeman, and our theme music is by Sarah Siegel Lazar. We're a member of the CJN Podcast Network. To support our work and everything the CJN does, visit the cjn.ca slash donate to make a monthly donation and receive a charitable tax receipt. Thanks so much for listening and see you next time. Y'all remember that joke from Airplane? The old lady asked for some light reading. How about this leaflet? Famous Jewish sports legends. But in actuality, that's changing. Jews are crushing it in sports around the world, and we are here to celebrate them. Sandy Kopak gets his 10th strikeout. Zach Hyman, his first career hat trick. 41 points for Diddy Abdiel. It's Sue Bird's building. I'm Gabe. And I'm Jamie. We love Jews and we love sports, but most of all, we love quelling over Jews in sports. Together we host Menschwarmers, the longest running Jewish sports podcast in the world. Listen and subscribe at the cjn.ca and wherever you find your podcasts.